How do we explain the feeling when we know we've been somewhere before? Is this feeling coincidence, or is it possible we've lived past lives? A woman in Scotland believes that she has lived before as a young king who died 450 years ago. Two sisters killed in a car accident are believed by their father to have been reincarnated as twins in the same family. Okay. And what is the action? Um, I'm walking down a path in the woods. A woman undergoes regression therapy to learn about her previous life. As I'm walking, I start to feel that somebody's watching me. Is it possible to discover if we have lived past lives? This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. One of the greatest generals in the history of warfare was George S. Patton, a brilliant commander with an uncanny sense of cavalry tactics. He was a philosopher and poet, and had a fundamental belief in reincarnation. Once, as he drove through the French countryside, Patton heard the sounds of a distant battle. He was certain he had fought here before, as the commander of a Roman legion, or perhaps as a Napoleonic general. General Patton's belief in reincarnation, in his timeless military experience, gave him the confidence that his decisions were right above all others. For anyone who has had that uncomfortable tingling, that memory of an event they could not possibly have witnessed, there may be a way to unlock the past. It's a technique called regression therapy. Loy and Robert Young teach reincarnation at the Experimental College at California State University at Northridge. The Youngs say past lives is not a new concept. Reincarnation and the belief in reincarnation is a lot older than the belief in uh, the one lifetime idea. In fact, up until the Middle Ages, a majority of people in Europe believed in some form of reincarnation or rebirth. It's only in more recent times that uh, we've gone to this one lifetime theory. In fact, nobody's ever proved that we've only had one lifetime. What I'd like to go over briefly is just the description of reincarnation and karma. In seminars, the Youngs discuss the principles of life and rebirth. Now, reincarnation just simply means that a person keeps coming back and coming back and coming back until they reach a stage of perfection. Classes are told that problems we experience in our present lives, such as emotional traumas, can be traced to a previous existence. The youngs feel that if we discover our past lives, we can understand and thus solve our current problems. When you work with regression therapy, you're really going back for the cause, see? If you just stay in this lifetime, all you've got to do is to blame your parents uh, for what went wrong with you, or maybe your early childhood training or something like that. And as soon as you can go out of this life, you're not limited to time, then you can go after the real cause of something. And when you can find the real cause of something, that's it. You're finished. Few psychologists agree with the Youngs, who are almost alone in practicing regression therapy. Come in. Oh, hi. I'm Lloyd. Hello, how are you? That's my husband. Lucia Capiccioni is a practicing psychologist and author who for many years tried unsuccessfully to understand why she felt fear in her relationships with men. 
She came to the Youngs, hoping she could benefit from regression therapy. Is that comfortable? All right. Mm -hmm. Good. What I'd like to do first, really identify this problem that you're having with men. Could you tell me exactly what it is? Well, I've been through a series of relationships with men in which uh, either I'm not getting what I want out of the relationship or the man isn't. It's very unsatisfying. Okay. Is there like sadness or is there fears? What could you identify it a little bit more closely? Um, well, at this point, I feel a lot of fear about it. Now, have you ever had, like, any reoccurring dream, anything connected with men, something that's happened over and over and over? Lucia has recently experienced nightmares, which could be symbolic of events from a past life. Could you tell me briefly about it? Well, in the dream, I'm asleep in bed, and I sense the presence of a stranger, a man outside who's trying to break into the house to harm me. Just close your eyes and relax your body. I don't want to give you the commands because I don't want you to go into a hypnotic trance in any way. The next phase begins with a series of sensory awareness exercises to completely relax Lucia's mind and body. These therapy sessions last for several hours. Now, if it is not in this life, then, if that's pretty sure it, nothing like that has ever happened, we need to focus out of this life now. Focus out of this life. Lucia says that the incident in her nightmare has never actually occurred in this lifetime. Therefore, Loy concludes that the cause of Lucia's fears could be hidden in a past life. Really use your intuition. This is the key moment in regression therapy. And there, right there. Okay. Loy must now guide Lucia back to a previous existence. Well, I'm in a woods in daytime. It's like early afternoon. I'm a young girl um, wearing a long white gown of some kind. It feels like a Greek gown, yeah. Well, I'm walking down a pathway, and um, I feel the leaves under my feet, and I, I can hear them crunching. All right, let's move to the crisis part, and let's find out what happened. Well, as I'm walking down this path, I'm alone. And, and I sense the presence of somebody behind me somewhere in the, in the trees. There's somebody there. Um, it feels like there's somebody watching me. And I'm... I'm really scared. I don't know what to do because I'm alone. And um, I don't know whether to scream or run. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stay with it. Just stay. Help with it. me! <laughs> Is somebody coming from behind me? Somebody has a, a, hands around my throat. And I can't move. I'm so scared. All right, go on through it. I can't see who it is because there's a black thing on, over my head. And I'm being pushed down to the ground. I can't see anything. <laughs> I can't move. It was a man. That man killed me. Release that life now. Release and let the lifetime go. Mm -hmm. And you can slowly open your eyes. Mm -hmm. There we go. And how do you feel now? I feel better. <laughs> yeah. See? See why it wouldn't, uh, why it wouldn't unblock without going out of this life? Yeah, I've never experienced anything like that in this lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> a few weeks later, Lucia met a man and is now involved in a satisfying relationship. So from Lucia's point of view, regression therapy seems to be working. However, there are often conflicting views about reincarnation. 
In England, two daughters do not agree with their father's belief that they are the reincarnation of their two sisters who had been killed. Yet there are compelling reasons to support their father's opinion. Scarborough, England, May 5, 1957. Joanna Pollock, aged 11, and Jacqueline Pollock, aged 6, were walking to church when they were struck and killed by a speeding motorist. John Pollock, the father of the two girls, was devastated by the tragedy. Yet out of his profound grief and later events, he began to accept a bizarre theory. I have no belief at all that my daughters are here, other than their mortal remains. My two daughters were reincarnated. John Pollock was convinced that, in fact, he never lost his two daughters. Following year, my wife became pregnant. In the August of that year, she went to a prenatal clinic and she was examined by the gynecologist, our own family doctor, and the midwife who was later present at the birth. She had asked if everything was all right. She was told yes. There was only one heartbeat, one set of limbs. On the 4th of October, a little girl was born. Ten minutes later, to everyone's amazement, the second girl was born. I was amazed to see that the younger girl had a scar which went right across the forehead and into the right eye. The younger daughter who was killed had the identical scar. As the twins grew older, Mr. Pollock reports that unusual incidents strengthened his belief that the twins were the reincarnation of his first two daughters. The twins immediately recognized old items of clothing that had belonged to their two sisters. One recreated incident underlines his theory. I found two dolls that had belonged to the two girls that had been killed, my younger daughters. The elder of the twins picked up a doll and said, that is my Susan. I haven't seen her for a very long time. The younger of the twins went and picked up the other doll and she said, that's my Mary and I haven't seen her for a very long time. These twins had never seen these dolls in their life. They had belonged to their two sisters who had been killed. My wife and I brought the twins to Hexham to an area well known to the two girls who had died. We brought them in proximity of the church and school. Coming along here, where there's a four foot high wall, they were below the height of this wall, they couldn't see what was behind. As we approached, they turned around and said, there is the school round here, where we used to go, and there is the playground behind it. They could not possibly see this from where they were, and you cannot see the playground in any shape or form from here because it lies behind the school. We proceeded on, and as we approached the Abbey Gates, one of them turned to the other and said, the playground's over here with the swings, where Mummy used to take us. And they turned and said, Mummy, are you going to take us over there now? You can't see the playground because it lies below that incline. It's impossible to see it from the road. Today, the twins work in the family bookstore. It has been more than 21 years since their two sisters were killed. Do they agree with their father's belief in reincarnation? No, not at all, no. Nothing, no different. No. Sometimes I feel like I'm somebody else, not myself. I don't think of my sisters either, really. So, uh, I mean, I've got no doubt that we haven't been reincarnated to come back as our sisters. From a series of unusual events, however, John Pollock has fashioned his own unshakable theory of reincarnation. That my two daughters, who had been killed, had been reincarnated, they'd been given back. They'd been reborn to us. Outstanding evidence to me, which I looked for, I wanted perhaps, I don't know. But it was given to me, and I accepted it as such, as proof. For many of us, the memory of a past life exists only as fragmented images appearing in our dreams. Yet sometimes these images are so vivid in our minds that we feel compelled to investigate. Can we possibly verify the existence 
of a previous life? Corus Abbey in Scotland, a favorite retreat for His Majesty King James IV of Scotland during his reign in the 16th century. Oh, yes, I know this place. And I'm sure this rings a bell. And I'm, no, I, I'm sure I've been through that gate. A.J. Stewart believes she is the reincarnation of James IV. There's the little slide and passage. In search of cameras were present when she arrived for her first visit to Kourous. And if you listen very hard, you can still hear them singing. And it's only yesterday. Well, it's, to me, it's only yesterday. James IV was born in 1488 and was crowned king at the age of 15. His prosperous reign ended tragically when he was slain on the battlefield of Flotton in 1513. The trail of her memories led us into the town of Kouros itself. Had she been here before? And there's the market square. Horses look much better. But always it was like this of uh, houses piled on top of each other. And always the roofs are like this. They, they're much later than my time, but... These observations, although interesting, do not provide us with any conclusive evidence of her past life. The next stop was Traquair House, 50 miles south of Kourous. A.J. Stewart said she had never visited here before. As she searched her mind, she became aware of disturbing recollections having nothing to do with her own life. I have been dreading the journey down because I had an awful feeling it was going to look like I knew it did, and it does. Uh, the coloring on the walls is different. It was gray stone then, there was no harling, and I didn't approach that way. I came across the old road where I'm sitting now. How did A.J. Stewart come to believe that she was once a great king? Well, it's a gradual process. Um, I'd call it a life's remembering and forgetting and then the remembering again. And um, the very sudden confirmation of it was in 1967 when I'd been fighting very hard against these memories that had been thrusting through all the days of my life and I'd been trying to suppress them. We brought AJ into the castle through the current entrance added after the death of King James. She said she was immediately disoriented and sensed that perhaps something was out of place. Her first impressions were correct, as this was not the entrance used by James IV. The king would have entered through the secret passage used only by royalty. We first brought A.J. into the room where the king is said to have slept. They're right about this, you know. This was the king's bedchamber. History hasn't changed. It's like yesterday, and I could be lying down in that same bed. And the portraits, no, the portraits are after my time. Um, these aren't my people, but the room is the height, the height of the walls. That's right. And there's an oratory somewhere, is there not? There ought to be an oratory. Um, the king used to address his subjects from the balcony off the bedchamber. This is the window to the oratory, surely. It must be. There's a window that's beyond, because always I must have an oratory. Like a departed spirit returning home, she describes the room as she says it had been in the king's time. And I know that fireplace, and they had, there was a... But is this a past life memory, 
or simply imagination. Not merely metal. There was a stone thing built round because we had to screen off the heat because even in the basket you got this casting of the cinders and the things. But of course they were, they were kind of silken rugs that were put down for the king and tapestries. I've been down this stair before. Could A.J. Stewart, in a past life, have actually descended these steps, which led down a passageway to these stairs, which now lie in ruin, closed to the public? Or are all of her claims merely a romantic notion of history? It's a place that hasn't changed since my time. Uh, the ground always feels like home on places that I have known. No matter what is built on them, the ground will feel the same. Just occasionally I meet a house and I think to myself, um, this is not nearly what it was like. This is really home to me. And this is my home to me in the 16th century. Throughout much of the Eastern world, there exists the belief that all human spirits continue beyond physical death as part of the endless cycle of life. This concept is foreign to most Western minds. Like the Pollock twins, many of us do not accept such beliefs. But for others, such as Lucia Capicchioni and A.J. Stewart, the possibility of past lives is beyond question.